Aloha, everyone, and welcome back to another Space Weather Update. My name is Alexis. This is the Ascension Diaries, and on my channel, we study the space weather. We've been studying Solar Cycle 25, as well as previously Solar Cycle 24, to prepare, literally, for around seven or eight years to discuss what's happening right now on the sun. So, thankfully, it has become a pop culture moment the last couple days to talk about the sun. And I have watched multiple news anchors read a fantastic summary with the irregular pauses and without proper engagement to actually know what they're saying on the news, which was really funny to watch. But their summaries are sometimes really fantastic. And I can see why, you know, AI bots and writing bots are good for that kind of stuff because you just input what's going on from all these different sources and they can summarize it really really well in my opinion but again news acres actually don't know what they're saying and are having a hard time engaging the story from any sort of place of knowledge now there was also a story that came out that undercut the whole aurora borealis intensity and that was a story um, going viral i would say and people random strangers coming and commenting under my post which is troll city you know what i mean it was a troll moment the trolls were released and the trolls were saying that the Alaska Fairbanks University technology that some people call HARP, H-A-A-R-P, was responsible basically for the geomagnetic storm for the Aurora Borealis that we were seeing that night on the Friday night into the 10th of May. And therefore, all of us are ridiculous and we're just watching something that could be very dangerous or is just man-made, which again is a cop-out and... No one in the community who actually studies astrophysics and was watching the sun lead up to this geomagnetic storm were talking to me about this, were reaching out to me about this, were telling their audiences even, I don't know. I, I haven't had time to watch other people's videos genuinely. And uh, yeah, basically from my impression of things, it's, it's a troll moment. And if you actually understood what the technology was at the Alaska Fairbanks University, you would understand that that technology has been duplicated and it is all over the world. There's multiple places using a similar type of array of antenna to tickle and stimulate the high, high ionosphere because that's where the radio signals for the military and for the planet, they bounce off of that layer. So HARP was designed in a way to make that layer thicker or thinner any time that we wanted so we could either bounce a signal off of the very high layer of our atmosphere or we could pass a signal through to our satellites so they could literally open up or weaken the space with heat it'll loosen it up and allow more signals to go through so during a moment where nature is heating up that layer it makes sense that and we were seeing the reports you know you see the the alerts that say radio blackout it genuinely means that the ionosphere is being heated up, it's loosening up, and the radio signals are not able to bounce and travel across within the Earth sphere very easily. If I understand this tech correctly, and it's not something to be feared, but it, it does have the capacity to do much. And it also has the capacity to bounce information over top of other countries very far away and bounce it off the ionosphere at them. So... There is discussion about actually being able to bounce a signal on top of another country and it'll make those microwaves and those frequencies make people very uncomfortable. So that was a part of that technology discussion. But <clears throat> since the invention of this technology, many years have actually passed. And if you know humans like I know humans, when they have released something and they've already have the new thing in development pretty much and a lot of the technology even... Even the AI chat GBT stuff, a lot of that stuff is actually quite old. And we've been really getting the baby steps introduction to technology on this planet. Those of us who aren't creating it and those of us who are being marketed the so these solutions that were created, we're in a state of reception, but there's a whole group of people who are in the state of development. And the technology is a conversation I haven't even had on with a actual scientists in this field like I'd really love to but also a part of me doesn't want to know because I am aware that there is also a deep loss in spiritual connection when it comes into development of technology sometimes and that's been an issue and 
philosophically on our earth about the technology moving forward is that we must spiritually advance at the same time. And so on my channel, The Ascension Diaries, I've balanced the masculine, the feminine, the spiritual, and the, I want to say, the English language scientific culture. And I'm mixing them together because I went into school. I, I got my bachelor's degree in psychology, sociology. I had to do all of the sciences and all of the social sciences and a bunch of arts, as well as native and indigenous studies, religious studies, philosophy. There was a lot of stuff that I had to also <laughs> basically read textbooks about to get my education or allow that piece of paper to be mailed to me basically from this, this university. One of the oldest universities in Western Canada, like it was quite the education. I genuinely got a really good head start into my adulthood with this knowledge, but there was no understanding on how to apply this or engage, be, engage society with this knowledge and help. That was not what we were taught. And uh, you could spend maybe another 40, 60 grand to study under someone and work in the field. But obviously that math wasn't mathing and neither is the math about harp being the entire reason for our geomagnetic storm that happened on Friday, May 10th into Saturday, May 11th. Now today is Mother's Day. Shout out to the moms uh, as a divine feminine myself and one that is loved and lost. I would say that please just appreciate the mother every single day, Mother Earth, the mother within you, the mother that birthed you, just out of pure gratitude for your existence in this particular layer of reality, in this particular virtual reality that we're living in. I would appreciate if we just had a moment for the moms and our mother earth received all of this that you're seeing from father, son, or the masculine force in our, I would say in our neighborhood, in, in our particular environment. So this environment that we're in has been barraged, I would say, by the divine masculine <clears throat> from the outside, from nature. And what you're seeing on the screen is called a solar proton storm. And you're seeing all of this shrapnel, basically, because the wave that came off of the sun, the coronal mass ejection, which lifted off the surface of the corona of the sun, they are trying to educate people about this in the news. I was listening to them. This coronal mass ejection that was pushed off of the surface of the sun by these solar flare explosions to the point where it escapes the gravity and is shooting out into, into space, the satellites that are in between Earth and the moon, the Soho Lasco satellites that are taking this picture right now, they're seeing the actual corona shrapnel moving past the lenses. So you know that that's a direct hit. You know, that, that solar weather hit that satellite. Like you can physically see the protons, which is incredible. But of course, when the shrapnel moves through our many, many beautiful layers, which may or may not be weakening on Earth, uh, we still feel them and they still activate us. There's a lot of people who are rushing to ERs for rashes and other random symptoms that kind of came up all of a sudden and were at a de decent severity that they needed some medical help right away just to determine if somebody is going to be breathing or not in the next 10 to 20 minutes. So... There was some emergency situations and all of you who were maybe EMTs and working in the emergency services, I just want to give you guys a nod and I hope that my videos and even just downloading Space Weather Live, the app, or following them on Twitter with notifications will give you some decent insight on how your shift is going to go that day. <laughs> and honestly, if you just need to reach out to me and be like, hey, how is my shift going to go tonight? Um, I'm usually free and I'll probably just tell you. So I don't mind being that li liaison for you since perhaps your employers are not giving you that very, very, very helpful information in order to make their staff safe and happy. So if you are one of the people who hire safety, I would say emergency people, emergency crews, um, give them the text about the space weather sometimes. I don't know. I feel like it would be very helpful. Or if you work in the emergency room or any sort of, like I said, any sort of emergency care needs this data for sure. 
on their phone, in their pocket, on their Apple Watch, whatever it is. I don't have those watches, but I know they are incredibly popular, especially for people over the age of 40. <laughs> it is insane how useful the Apple Watch seems to be for that generation. But all that cultural nonsense aside, I am six, seven minutes into this video informing you about the space weather. So let's, I'm going to move my face now and let's get into the data a little deeper. How's that sound? Good, good. So here is obviously the footage. This is all happening during the 10th. While things were already hitting Earth, this was already happening in space. So the 11th yesterday, just while we were already worried about the aurora, we we're sharing pictures. The sun was still just rocking us okay so it's not over <laughs> unfortunately this is not over we are well into another week of solar receiving on our end on the earth side of things look at all that many many coronal mass ejections coming out just to the last second that the footage is even being uploaded like it's on <laughs> the sun has decided and why is it doing this well, the interplanetary magnetic fields is what we call the cords, the magnetic cords that, and the geometries that are formed from all of the planets also rotating and being dragged behind the sun. Now, from our perspective on Earth, Venus here on the right, Jupiter here on the left, and Uranus is actually back here, which we can't see it, but these planets are approaching the sun in proximity to Earth. So the energy from Jupiter and its light and the energy bouncing off of Venus and its light is kind of ricocheting all towards us in a way, energetically. And when these planets get close to the sun in relation to us, it pushes more of the sunshine and all of this activity towards us too, in my opinion, based off of all of that interplanetary magnetic field engagement. So I am not an expert in this. You just heard me talking about I graduated as a psychology sociology student. I've had to teach myself astrophysics and um, astronomy basically to get that extra layer of environmental factors that are affecting my clients and their health and their wellness. So health and wellness now definitely returning to the masses. Okay the geomagnetic storm that harp over here in Fairbanks, Alaska, may or may not have, I want to say, contributed to. I'm not saying they didn't contribute. I'm just saying there's no way they're fully responsible because I saw the sun setting it all up too. So this, it was all the the evidence was all there for this storm to happen, anyways. But the severity of the storm is fishy. I'll be honest with you. And for those of you who were being like, "Oh, this harp conversation is definitely making me think a little deeper." Good. I think that was all on purpose. I believe there was an attempt to inform human beings about the artificial side of Aurora while it was naturally occurring at the same time to some record-breaking levels. Now the reports are saying that we haven't gotten a KP9 geomagnetic storm. I have never seen one doing the channel since 2003, which is 21 years ago about. So 21 years you have matured since potentially you've seen or we've seen on a global level the aurora that strong. Does that make sense to everybody? Is that kind of hitting? Because be, the impact of this is, this is, you know, good data. This is historical data. And the photographs from last night aren't as strong as the photographs from the night before, obviously. But... We got to see what we got to see. Many of you got to see the pinks and the, the greens. And we're going to discuss what the colors mean as well because I just saw a beautiful infographic about it to help easily explain the colors because it was escaping me. That information was escaping my mind. I was like, okay, I know it's a gas. I know it has to do with the height of the aurora, the colors, but I couldn't remember. So it has to do with oxygen levels a lot of the time what the coloring is and why we're getting certain coloring with the aurora borealis so that is important to note and so we were seeing pinks right let's go to 
maybe my Instagram, we can go there for a second. Here is the beautiful Matterhorn. So we were seeing these pinks, right? So this is excited atomic oxygen at high altitudes, obviously up in the mountains, high altitude. So that's checking out in this picture. So it's only visible under intense solar activity due to low concentrations of oxygen at high altitudes. So clearly the higher an altitude you go, the less oxygen there is going to be, especially over areas that do not grow massive forests like big barren mountain ranges that or here in the desert, <laughs> I would say. So areas that had a little more oxygen, they were seeing a little more greens and purples and blues. So the next color down from red, which is low, high altitude, low oxygen, is green, which is again, lower altitudes and exci the excited oxygen is at a slightly higher concentration basically. So isn't it beautiful that all these different colors can just be about o oxygen concentrations? In a way, it is interesting, but the uh, nitrogen also gets involved. So ionized mole molecular nitrogen is how we get that those purples and blues. It's a reaction of the molecular nitrogen because atomic oxygen is uncommon also at low altitudes. So this is atomic oxygen specifically. So similar to red, blue and purple is associated with intense solar activity, of course, but they are in a slightly lower altitude. So the darker the colors or the farthest color away from red, it means that the altitude's pretty low. But the higher the red count, the more atomic oxygen there are there is going on. Green is like the happy space in a way. That's kind of what we average out at as green. But we've been seeing a lot more red lately and that higher I would say higher altitude aurora coming through. Well, I've been noticing that a lot. <sighs> These posts did pretty well on my page. We informed 333 people saw some of these posts. Very good. We informed, I'd say, a healthy new group of interested people to continue tracking the space weather because now they have a personal interest because their family member was affected, they were affected. And now they're going, oh, Alexis, begrudgingly, I will have to start watching the space weather because I don't want to admit to my family I'm crazy. There is a scientific reason why I am having these symptoms and why I'm becoming more sensitive. It's because the solar cycle 25 is spiking right now. The sun is becoming the strongest it's going to be for the next 11 years right now. So here's our famous sunspot that caused a lot of this trouble 3664 that merged with 3668 it's two sunspots that have merged into one now they're comparison comparing this to the carrington event sunspot which is a similar size so they were discussing carrington event level disaster but like i mentioned we can't have a carrington level disaster anymore because the technology has totally changed since then Nobody is using telegraph wires to relay data. They're using harp. <laughs> and it's work and they're not even using that anymore. You guys, there's Starlink, okay? There's technology. I want to say, like I said on my last video, non-local technology to help us deal with local disturbances. Does that make sense? You know, they're literally landing rovers on other planets, you guys. It's it's they're trying to tell you things without having you freak out basically in the science community over and over and over and over because y'all are sensitive <laughs> and they don't know how to deal with sensitive people so they just omit information i would say has been the easiest way for the scientists who maybe aren't socially inclined to proceed moving humanity forward <laughs> So the solar wind speed is at an 863 right now. I don't know if I've ever seen it that fast on the show ever. So unfortunately, I don't think I'm getting the proper details from NOAA, NOAA, which again, they were telling people about in the news. They were like, oh, the NOAA has this job of predicting space weather. 
what a more complex and intense job. I'm like, dude, the weather people need to know the space weather to predict the weather. So, I mean, the main anchor doesn't know that, I assume. The weather person probably did, but they didn't let the weather person probably do the space weather story all the time on the news either. So, (laughs) I didn't watch every news segment, but I watched a couple and they made me laugh. So, (laughs) Here's some pictures from spaceweather.com, a really reliable website just to get the data real quick. This is the most important data I think you need to know, is what is the current wind speed? What is the current solar wind speed? This is insane. You should be stuck laying down with potentially extreme levels of discomfort with this solar wind speed. It's, It's uncommon to be that fast. Our average is 400 kilometers per second. It's over double the average of what we're used to. All right, so I'm just going to make sure that everything is calming down when it comes to the sun. Yeah, everything is calming down. I think that one sunspot finally turned away. Hopefully, a sun. if Solar Ham's website is up, I can show you that. Wow, look at this. So these are all of our X flares. They're just going into the past. May 12th is proving to be quite a calm day in comparison to the last week, I would say, even so far. So here's our solar cycle 25, top 50 solar flares. And here is our solar flare from from the 11th. It is properly here at its spot at number two. Number two, strongest solar flare of solar cycle 25 was an X5.89, but now it looks like they bumped it up to a 5.7 for the for the archive here we are archiving the most powerful solar flare that we've gotten was this february 22nd this past february 22nd of this year was our strongest solar flare at a 6.3 x 6.3 just so you know those of you who like to regurgitate facts hopefully that one will stick and is palatable for you to repeat unfortunately When it comes to heavy space weather, the instruments and my resources to show you a variety of sources of information tend to just stop working. So I've got about, you saw that the NOAA solar wind charts don't seem to be accurately telling me anything, but it looks like they're trying to. It's interesting. Okay, so they've had to scale everything up. That's why it doesn't look normal to me. Okay, great had to scale everything up another 400 kilometers per second above average so the average solar wind speed isn't even on here anymore we are 400 over and it got up to 500 over the wind speed (laughs) you can see the time there at the bottom at utc in that little gray bar so let's see it went up to 994 kilometers per second the solar wind speed at around you know utc zero like right when may 12 started we may have had the fastest solar wind speed that maybe i have really ever seen on this channel like it's really 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 up there it's really impressive that we've just bodied that i slept great some of you guys are not sleeping well i hope you slept better last night Let's look. Oh no, our global consciousness dot can't be reached. The scandal, you guys. Oh no. Oh, okay. Scandal, short lasting. You know, scandal's a scandal, but how long did it last? Okay. We're in the green and the coherency is returning. We were in major sections of incoherency the last few days where we saw a lot of red in and lack of coherency and this is when i assume those solar wind waves are just hitting us and spraying protons through our brains so don't worry about it looks like we're going back into coherency we shall celebrate and praise the creation together praise god (laughs) the solar storm was spectacular as god permits all right here is the electromagnetic field the extremely low frequencies of the electromagnetic field being measured over by Tomsk, Russia University. And these guys may have one of those harp <laughs> equipments over there too. Wouldn't surprise me in the least because they study the ionosphere. This is them 
studying the behavior <laughs> of the atmosphere and including the ionosphere and what it's up to and what it's delivering us on our brain wave frequencies in those extremely low range of zero to 40 hertz. Not a lot of activity that is super amplified, but a lot of activity that's very, I want to say severe with its timing, very, very quick blips. This is very jarring looking, thankfully at low amplitudes, but still those micro movements of frequencies, I they're important and there's many scientists that are even trying to say that studying this is silly because there's so many environmental factors that could also amplify these frequencies and make the antenna read out some sort of excitation and i think that those scientists are quitters and there's plenty of quitters in science there's plenty of quitters who try and explain away an entire section of science because they couldn't figure it out or they got frustrated or they found something else else out that made that science technically not what they thought it was and all the goodies but I'm not there I'm a millennial I was raised with basically the most thrilling entertainment that they could think up so my ability to be shocked is definitely dampened <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to push through this study for the sake of women in general because men are dominating this study as well. There's a few women out there for sure. One of them is doing very well on Twitter as a space weather woman. And uh, I'm doing this for the ladies. This is for the girlies out there too. And for all of you men who also worry about the sake of women and their ability to be strong, uh, I'm doing it for you guys too. So your sister is out here. She's tough. Don't worry about it. I got this. Okay. We have Italy also showing amplification in the extremely low frequencies between zero and 20 Hertz just in the last hour. So the brain waves between zero and 15 Hertz is pretty much, you know, you're dead zero Hertz to about alpha beta so this may be putting people into a beta brain wave which is kind of like being in an anxious little squirrel mode so things got real squirrely with the readings and the energies the last couple of days so i was using squirrel symbol because that's genuinely how i felt that's how fast i felt my brain waves going for a second there it was going real fast and more reports kept coming in and I was having a hard time even grounding the momentum to actually make content because everything was moving so quickly. Unfortunately here, heartmath.org doesn't have what we need to have a good comparison. It looks like um, their data centers, all their data is just zeroing out since May 5th. So these guys, I guess, are on vacation. So Honestly, I just want to close these windows and never include them again in my shows because they've been so disappointing so many times. <laughs> but every once in a while, they're working. So I've just stuck it out because I'm tough. Earth frequencies shifting out of their normal range. I would say the earth frequency is maybe averaging a little bit faster, a little bit more squirrely. That earth resonance, the Schumann resonance primary frequency here, it should be around 7.8 is been hanging out at 8.8 .8 as a max just in the last day last few hours we got to an 8.86 .8 hertz for the planet just for a moment just for a moment and then he go, goes back down it's an average number the earth's resonance it's not an exact number all the time or i think we would all very much have no thoughts we would have no variance of thought so i think this is kind of like the lubricant this undulating realm of frequencies is kind of a lubricant that we use to swim around in with our brains or the ocean of frequencies we can think through or use as our own brain waves <clears throat> as mammals that were born on this earth we've basically formed to swim in the waters of the frequencies and of the environment that we're in and the fish did the same thing in the ocean they had to do the same thing we're just surface walkers and we're at the bottom of the atmospheric ocean of earth layers it doesn't look like water but it's full of water and gases and 
I just saw a whole thing about ETs and any sort of things coming to the surface of Earth from anywhere in space has to basically submarine it down here. It's more of a submarine action. And they got to basically encapsulate themselves and then like sink down here. <laughs> and sink down here in frequency, sink down here in this invisible ocean of gases that is our our atmosphere. Like uh, the technology to actually fly around in our atmosphere and go into space and stuff, that conversation has to continue because there is a few missing aspects of physics that need to be taught real quick. And if you've been thinking about getting a boat, I would say get a submarine. You know what I mean? They can equip that stuff to go up or down, <laughs> is what I've heard. So just get a submarine instead. If you have to pick one, pick submarine. So Venezuela has had, I believe, also some volcanic activity. And they're getting a lot of earthquakes down there in, too, in Central America. Uh, Mexico just had a really, really big 6.4 earthquake. So we're just going to check the earthquake situation because that's what's going to happen next is basically Earth is about to have all their earthquakes and volcanoes in response to all of this pressure in the upper atmosphere from the sun. That pressure translates down through those layers of the the atmosphere and shake the earth and move our continents around. I believe that's how it's all done, you know, for the most part. I'm not seeing, here it is. So this is it, the Bris, Brisas Barra Salina Cruz, I think was, oh no. Brisas Barra de Suchat, Mexico. I'm actually not sure how you say an S or a C-H in Spanish. I don't know. <laughs> I actually did take Spanish, but now I'm having a hard time reading this. So I'm a little rusty. It has been almost a decade since I've been in school now. So <laughs> sorry, guys, 6.4. So that's literally right on the border of Guatemala. It's ridiculous that it's actually a Mexican earthquake. Because look at that. It's right there. Look how much more complex things get in Guatemala as soon as you get over the border. They've packed everybody in there like sardines and there's a lot of migration coming up through this very delicate part of the world this central american area people are migrating out of here because of the earth the, it's unsettled this land is unsettled and there is a prophecy also called the jaguar prophecy i'm pretty sure where it's about migrating out of this area and following the jaguar up and now we're getting all of the jaguars coming and they're all hanging out in southern arizona and texas like we're watching these <laughs> big cats come up all the way into here so it's all about watching the intelligent animals as well and what they're up to watching the migration cycles my parents <laughs> were telling me that the wind stream where they live is actually changed direction and those of you who want to talk about the polar shifts with, without chaos and without fear, I personally believe that the poles are migrating. And that is the, I would say that's the mainstream discussion as well. And they track the migrating poles. They track where they're moving. And when these poles migrate, so do the entire jet streams and the whole Earth's behavior will migrate with it. So if you've noticed that the wind is coming in a different direction all of a sudden where you live, look up the migrating pole and go look at the wind streams. There's plenty of satellite maps and weather apps and blah, blah, blah that show you the exact direction of the wind, where it's going, and compare it to how it was 10 years ago. Those of you guys been watching the news for many decades now, you know, you probably will notice. So I'm just pointing that out to you. Just take a peek while... Texas uh, attempts to absorb pretty much all of the lightning available in the atmosphere as well as whatever this very long bridge of, I don't know, grounded, grounding something in the ocean, in quotes, I want to say this is in the ocean, in quotes, even though I believe there's something not in the ocean over here potentially <laughs> uh all these big blobs of open ocean not really believable these days <laughs> and uh submarines 
submarines are part of the discussion. Just watch where the lightning grounds on the surface. There's lots of very, very spicy areas where lightning is grounding because there's a lot of lightning to ground. There's a ton of solar wind to ground. It's double in speed potentially right now, the solar wind. It's nothing to make jokes about. It's genuinely significant in the data. So here is where the earthquakes are happening, and here's another huge storm front coming for the area too. So Central America is about to get slammed with even more. So they need our hopes and prayers right now, I believe. I think that's where the shift is happening. It's coming across the ocean from Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, which is usually where we're praying for even Korea and, and uh, Japan. It's been a lot of chaos over here. The Aurora storm hit strongest like over here. And uh, now the seasons are changing and it's all pushing over to Central America, the other part of the equator, it seems like. So we're going to keep an eye on that as we continue. Oops. All right, here we go. Magnetosphere. These are really fun. I didn't show you guys the impact of the solar wind, but since it's still going pretty hard, we can still look at this. But I didn't get to do this on the show last time because I'm pretty sure it was glitching out. A lot of this stuff, like I said, glitches out when I need it because I assume there's something on there that's a little too excitable. And they don't want me to go viral. They don't want us to go viral exposing something about the space weather that they can't control. You know what I mean? They want to control what goes viral. And when you own the media companies and blah, the algorithms, it, it makes sense that that'd be pretty easy to do. I'm not, I'm not mad because I wasn't, my job wasn't to create these social medias. My job is to track the space weather despite, despite uh, any sort of doubts, I would say, that I experience in humanity because I don't really care about the doubts at this point. I'm allowed to study the sun. <laughs> As a person who lives on the planet directly affected by the sun, I've got that right. So what do the Mayans think about today? Today is May 12th. This is Mother's Day. We've got the yellow solar seed today. I, I pulse in order to target. I realize awareness I seal the input of flowering with the solar tone of intention. I'm guided by the power of universal fire. So we've got some flowering with intention. We're getting some targeted awareness from this energy today. So we're going to we're going to be focusing and flowering <laughs> according to the Mayans. If I summarize that correctly, the moon is currently in Cancer in its home sign. It's going to move to Leo tomorrow. If you're having issues with your stomach, your mucus, your breasts, you know, and your feelings of safety at your home and with your family, it potentially is the moon putting that pressure on you. So I would look up what moon in Cancer means if you've been struggling this weekend and look where your Cancer placements are in your natal chart and your progress chart, in your Vedic chart, in your real sky chart, look at all of them. Compare and contrast all of them. They won't be too far off from each other either. You can't be totally opposite from what one system is saying about you to the other, in my opinion, with the astrology. It's all, I would say, maybe like 75% accurate <laughs> is best way to put it. So take everything with a grain of salt. Pretty much anything that resonates with you is going to light you up inside and you're going to pursue that information no matter where it came from. So just, yeah, sample everything, see how it goes. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. <laughs> We're almost at 7,000 subscribers, but we've got 6939, 369, the beautiful numbers. I don't mind seeing it, you know. This doesn't bother me at all. We can keep it with all these beautiful numbers. <laughs> And look at all these planets piling up behind the sun compared to Earth. From Earth view, Jupiter, Uranus, and Venus, just like I told you, are now meeting up behind the sun, which maybe is why it finally calmed down, because now the sun is between us instead of, I would say, sort of this liaison 
between us. It's now kind of maybe blocking the engagement a little more. So maybe it's calmed down. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. If you guys see my link tree dash or slash Ascension Diaries link, you can get all my space weather resources for yourself and a few extras. Hopefully all those links work. I update them. If they don't, let me know. If you'd like to get shopping, you get the shopping bug, you can go to my Divine Sovereign Beings Spring or Teespring website to get some of my custom pieces. If you want to get some awareness about the solar flares, I have the the X5. <sighs> Technically, yeah, this is from New Year's. I can make one for the X6 that happened February 22nd, the biggest one. I might have to do that, but I have a lots of different designs. They're all for fun. They're all to kind of poke at the consciousness of people running around at the grocery store behind you reading your shirt. You know what I mean? So if you need some new cotton products, something to wear for the summer, this is all the cotton. These are all cotton pieces. So you won't be mixing with polyester in these pieces, except for a couple of the older ones. So just triple check when you're buying to be sure, sure that the materials are what you want them to be. Okay, I gave you that heads up. Join my Instagram if you're able. Please go to ascensiondiaries.com. Get your email in there for the emergency mailing list. Just in case, you know, the technology poops itself. Some One of the social medias decides to sell itself, whatever. I've got a backup of all of your information on my website the best I can. And then in, in real time, you guys are all on my Patreon. So real time updates, patreon.com. I'm going to send them this video, for example. They get every single update I deem important about the space weather. And they are genuinely a part of the study. Day in and day out, They, the Patreon members are a part of the study on purpose. So thank you all for going to patreon.com slash ascension diaries, joining for free, joining for the budget price, or joining fully as a guardian. All of that help is very appreciated. I'm a young woman, young entrepreneur. I am not, uh, I would say, financially stable yet with my work. I'm constantly looking for new ways to supply and support myself. So if you are seeing this video and you're like, I want to help Alexis keep doing space weather videos, all you have to do is join my Patreon and that is going to go big. That's going to go huge. It's going to be a major help. And if you'd like to donate to me directly and really fund this project, which many people have over the years at varying amounts, just because I assume God was willing and that was the plan to keep me going, I have those options on my uh, link tree as well. So I have the donation area for my PayPal, which is paypal.me slash dsbeings, dsbeings, that's my PayPal. You can also send via Cash App, dollar sign DS Beings, or you can send via uh, Shaman or XRP, Zum Wallet, you know, crypto donations. And if there's a crypto you'd like to donate that I don't have a wallet for yet, just let me know and I'll open it up because I'm, I'm happy to use any of the currencies. It's no big deal at all. We are well versed in the variety, I would say. And uh, yeah, that's been a pleasure to hang out with you guys as always and do this video. It's been a lot of fun. And I will see you on the next one. Thanks for your interest in space weather. And here we go for more fun. Bye, y'all. Beep, bubble, beep.